Laughing Loon presents Building Utecht, Part 6. The kayak pictured here is Utecht, designed and being built by Rob Max. The building shown here is a condensed version of the more detailed information in my instruction books and how to videos available on my website. In Part 5 of Building Utecht, we finished stripping the deck, we glassed it, and we are applying fill coats. It gets three fill coats over the wet out glass. Once the fill coats are cured on the deck, it's time to remove the deck from the hull. Place a flat bar in the seam between the deck and the hull. Place it against a station and use a dead blow mallet to whack it very hard to knock it free from its hot glue bonds. Remove the deck and place it on supports next to the hull. I use a scraper with a rounded blade on the interior to knock the bridge supports off. You're using it like a hammer to hit them very hard and they'll pop right cleanly off. Then I'll use that same rounded blade scraper to clean all the carpenter's glue off of all the joints. Huh? Oh, wrong scraper on the strips. So sanding will be much easier. It's the same procedure for the deck. Support the deck well, knock off the bridge supports and scrape off all the carpenter's glue. I put a heavy weight on the deck on one of the main supports to keep the deck from sliding around while I'm scraping. I sand with a random orbital sander with a soft interface pad to allow me to follow the concave surfaces of the inside of the deck. I use 40 grit, which cleans the surface up pretty fast. The inside of the deck and hull are not going to be visible, so I don't have to sand with any finer grit. Just sand with 40 or 60 grit and then fiberglass. The soft interface pad on my random orbital sander allows me to easily get into the curve of the bilge. I use weights in the boat to help tilt and position the boat so that it's easy and comfortable for me to sand. I glass the interior of my hull with bias cut pieces of fiberglass from the excess from glassing the exterior. This bias fiberglass will have twice as many fibers going over the strip joints. I start the wet out at one stem and work my way toward the other, keeping a wet edge as I go. First I roll resin along the keel, and then I work up to the bilge on both sides, and then I work up to the shear lines. This keeps the glass from being pulled up from the bottom of the hull. I keep my hull as lightweight as possible by squeegeeing off excess resin after I wet out half the hull. To remove excess resin, my resin has to be as thin as possible. So I never mix more than six ounces. I have my temperature at 80 degrees and this allows me to keep my boat very lightweight. I wet out the glass and the stems with a foam brush and as soon as possible I switch to a roller. The multiple layers of bias cloth in the hull here are actually easier to wet out than one single piece. Uh, with a long single piece you end up pushing wrinkles and bubbles down toward the stems and it's never pretty. Squeegee down toward the keel to keep from lifting the glass out of the stems. Lay out bias cut pieces of glass for the deck. I'm working on the bevel on the hull to join the holland deck. I'm creating this bevel with a spokeshave. 
I'll do the same thing on the interior of the deck once the glass is cured there. Once again I'm wetting out the deck using small batches of resin with slow hardener and I'm not worried about having a beautiful transparent finish but the warm temperatures and slow hardeners just allow all air bubbles to dissipate so I get a really complete wet out without any, without any voids. And to keep my layup as lightweight as possible I want to squeegee off excess resin. My deck had spread wider than it should be, so I am applying clamps to pull it back to the correct dimensions. I'm installing a skeg in Utec, and I want to install the skeg box before I join the deck and hull. I'll lay a bed of thickened epoxy and place the skeg box into it, and then I want to make a fillet around the perimeter of the skeg box base. I shape the fillet with a round tip tool. And clamp the skeg box to a T-square resting on the shear line of the hull to ensure it's plumb. Then I can tape the deck and hull together in preparation for glassing the internal seams. If I like the fit of the deck and hull, if the joint is perfectly tight, then I can go on to laying out the hatch openings uh, because I need to cut the hatch openings so I can reach through them to glass the internal seam. In part 7 of building Utec, we'll cut out the openings for the hatches and we'll glass the interior seam between deck and hull. For more information on my strip building techniques, see my shop tips pages at laughingloon.com. Full plans for the Sea Kayak Utec, along with many other canoe and kayak plans, instruction books, and how-to videos are available at my website laughingloon.com